in the very early stages when we were flowing through Esther's apparatus, the earliest words that we used were, when your desire and your belief are the same vibrational frequency, then it is. But when you desire something that you don't believe, now this is a little more sophisticated. You desire it and you believe it under these conditions, you just don't believe it under these conditions. And you know why? Because you, just like almost everybody else, have been calibrating to other humans who all have an opinion about what you're doing. And people who aren't going with the flow don't like it when you do. They'll call you lazy, they'll call you lucky, they'll call you spoiled, they'll call you taking advantage. They have lots of labels in their misunderstanding that you're going with the flow. Most people who are struggling really appreciate a good struggler. But it's a flawed premise. It's a false premise. It will never work for you. Esther is faced with that almost every day because Esther has always been a focused person but also a hard worker. She's always been willing to do whatever it takes. And here's the thing. We really want you to hear this in precisely the way that we are intending it here. Sometimes when the energy isn't flowing, you just got to do whatever it takes to get it done. Here's an example. You come across a car that's on fire on the road. Jerry carried a fire extinguisher in every vehicle that he and Esther were ever in, and he put out a lot of engine fires. He was like the good Samaritan along the road. Always had a full fire extinguisher. So let's say you see somebody's vehicle is on fire. Well, your spiritual teachers will say to you, you should pray to help this brother. And your metaphysical teachers will say, you should meditate to raise this person up. And a very smart, practical person would say, get out the fire extinguisher and put out that fire. In other words, calibrating in life is figuring out not just what the situations are that are surrounding you, but what is the circumstance by which you can get the best results? What's the path of least resistance? That's the way to ask and answer this question. What's the path of least resistance? Is the path of least resistance to drag them to safety and then pray with them? Or is the path of least resistance to drag them to safety and then put the fire out with the fire extinguisher? And you might say, oh, that's hard work. I want to do it with the power of my mind. And we say, do alignment with the power of your mind and love with the power of your mind and appreciate with the power of your mind and focus with the power of your mind. And then you will be inspired. Here it is. We have never said this before. Thank you so much. Your inner being will inspire you to the behavior to get you what you want, given the beliefs that you hold. That's why sometimes it feels like hard work's the right thing. Well, your inner being certainly knows that you're all wadded up in what you learned as a kid or what somebody else has been. Your inner being is not saying, get rid of all those hindering beliefs and then I'll work with you. Your inner being says, you believe what you believe and you believe what you believe for a reason because you saw it and you thought about it and you offered a vibration about it and then you attracted about it. You're not being unwise because you believe things that don't serve you. Your life has shown you some of those. We're just fine tuning here, aren't we? We're just getting better and better and it never ends, does it? The expansion or the understanding or the evolution of desire never ends, does it? So our big message here from this important conversation is you got to stop calibrating to humans who don't know what they're doing and calibrate to your inner being who always knows, who always knows exactly what it's doing in relationship to you. Your inner being will never guide you towards something that is good for you and bad for someone else. If it's good for you, it's good for for others too. It's not like there's this little pile of goodness and your inner being is saying, come with me, we'll keep it all to ourselves. Your inner being will show you how to get it within that range so that you are radiating outward to everyone in your vicinity, which includes all that is, really, all that is. Well, here's the thing. Let's put action into a very clear perspective. 
We are in, in no way trying to talk you out of action because it is so fun. We are just wanting the alignment to come first so that the action is inspired. And in that flow, it doesn't feel like hard work. It feels like, oh, that's a good idea. Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, that's a good idea. If we were going to apply the words hard work to anything that's going on here, we would say it's not the easiest thing in the world to get yourself focused into what you want with so many around you clamoring for other things. There's a lot of distraction. And so the hard work is the focus. The hard work is the aligning. It's like, think about, this is a ridiculously silly analogy, but it will be a good starting point here. So imagine that you are like Esther and you're on your way walking to school. You're little. And it's not far. Let's say it's two miles. It wasn't for Esther, but let's just say to make the story better. <laughs> and you can walk to school, even if it's cold, even if it's raining, even if it's snowing. You can do it. But then your neighbor says, hop in. I'm going the same way. So you hop in and you use that vehicle to do the same thing. The vehicle that we're wanting you to feel from us is the vehicle of aligning with the energy that creates worlds. We like to explain it this way. When you know what you don't want, you launch the rockets to what you do want. And that vortex who collects all of that desire and the cooperative components that are melded and meshed together, this is a universal engine that has a lot of calling power, that when you ride the wave of it, it is easy. It's fighting it that's hard. It's fighting against the current of well-being that is wearing you all out. You think it's your hard work that's wearing you out? It's not going with the flow. That's what's wearing you out. Unworthiness is not going with the flow. Believing that you have to justify the good that comes to you through hard work is that unworthiness that is going against the flow. It's like, I want this, but I believe this, and there's a tug of war. Law of attraction is not like your mother who's trying to make it work out well for you. The law of attraction is an equal opportunity consultant who just brings you more of whatever you're focused on while you're focused upon it. So that's what we said the work really is, the choosing of the thought that produces this feeling or this feeling. The best thing to do is not get too far down on the emotional scale because once you're trending in the direction of what doesn't feel good, then a nap is a good remedy, meditating where you quiet your mind, anything that's distracting from what's bothering you is helpful because the human who has been believing that it takes hard work is going to take hold of that negative thing and wrestle it to the ground and try to kill it, not really being consciously aware that it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And bigger. Your inner being always will call you back, but some of you have to croak in order to do that. And we just don't think that you should have to let go of everything that is about your physical life in order to allow your vibration to rise. And having knowledge about how it works helps a lot. So there are some new words that we're introducing into the conversation. So let's just focus on these for a little bit and let's let a new best friend word be, which way am I trending? And another really good phrase be, which part of the emotional scale am I coming from? Because if you can identify that you're coming from the lower half of the scale, then you might be wise enough to say, I better buckle up because it's going to be hard. Where if you know that you're on the upper half of the scale, you know that it's just going to get easier and easier. So then the question is, what do I do when I know for sure that I've been trending on the lower half of the scale? And we say, first thing is be nice to yourself. Don't beat up on yourself. Don't begin saying that I'm unworthy or I can't do that or that person's doing better than I am. Here's some things that we know about your inner being. Do you accept that you have an inner being? Do you accept that your inner being is hanging around in your vibrational reality, calling you toward the things that you have fashioned there? And do you believe that 
when you have calibrated to your inner being, you have clarity and love and appreciation. In other words, that's the vibrational arena where those good feelings are. So do you believe that what you're thinking and how you're feeling are directly related? And do you know why? Do you know what your emotions are about? Your inner being is always on the upper half of the scale. And when you're not, you feel negative emotion. It's as simple as that. So when you feel negative emotion, wouldn't it be helpful to say, I'm on the lower half of the scale, but my inner being is on the upper half of the scale. Because if my inner being weren't there, I wouldn't know what this even feels like. There would be no relativity. There would be no relationship. There would be no way to calibrate it. So now you've got some tools in your hand where you can say, it's temporary and it's even logical. I didn't do something wrong. It's logical that I would feel this way. I want to feel this way and I don't. It's logical that I would feel bad, but I don't trend that way. I'm not a depressed person. I don't trend that way. I'm an optimistic person. I see the best in most things. I feel good much of the time. I feel really good. It's as wonderful to feel interested in something as it is to feel euphoric about something. All of that is you in calibrated range with your inner being, you see. Esther has been saying recently, she wants to be this way and she wants to believe it. I'm a pointer. I decide, I line up my energy, and then I'm inspired to whatever it takes in order to bring things about. But isn't it really, really, really a true thing how fun it is to get your own hands in your own clay? We just want you to look at it this way. You want to do the work with your mind. Get all the cooperative components going so it's unfolding. And then you want to jump in to the fun action of encouraging it along. So what we're really talking about here, you can break it down pretty simply. Am I right now coming from the upper half of the chart, the upper half of the emotional scale? Am I feeling like letting it go and contentment and satisfaction? Or am I feeling from frustration down? Now, we're going to say something to you. We've not said this before in this way. This is a leading edge conversation that you have evoked because of the clarity of what you are living. So you're going to hear this easily and everyone else is going to benefit from this. So can you picture what we are calling the emotional scale? Can you picture it? At the top is appreciation and love and all of those good feelings. And then all the way to the bottom is depression and despair and unworthiness and grief. And the range is in between. So now we're going to tip that scale on its side. If you've been with us for 20 years, you know sometimes we talk about the scale, you know what you don't want, you know what you do want. The emotional scale, you know what you do want, you know what you don't want. So let's flip this thing on its side. So you know what you don't want, and you know what you do want. So now the fulcrum of this scale is over here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, it's between seven and eight between letting go and satisfaction. So here it is over here. Notice how when you're trending in the direction of what you want, when you're trending in the direction of love and appreciation, feel how resistance freeing that is. When you're trending in the direction of appreciation and love, now think about how you feel when you're trending toward anger and blame and guilt. If you understand where that fulcrum is and you understand the difference, because the law of attraction is going to bring you whatever you're focused upon. And there really is no ending to how much it will bring before you make the shift.